Welcome to the third installment of our premium vine guide. In this video, we are going to cover Japan, China, Italy, France, and Sweden ground force vehicles. That's a mouthful right there. Naming all those off. It's, all, it's only five countries. Geography is hard. You may have noticed that some of the War Thunder cells have begun. And if you are going to pick something up, we have a War Thunder affiliate link, which will kick back 3% to the channel if you use it. And we would greatly appreciate that. That helps us to make more content like this for you in the future. Our first nation up on the docket is Japan. And we will be starting off with the Hago Commander. For 250 Golden Eagles, this bad boy could be yours today. It'll come with a 37mm Type 94 cannon and a 7.7mm machine gun. Compared to other Rank 1 vehicles, Bear, how would you rank this premium? It's about on par for a lot of the 250 Golden Eagle Rank 1 premiums you'll see. The advantage of the Hago is you do have a pretty potent cannon with pretty good gun depression at negative 15 degrees and you do move like a BT-5 but you don't have that much armor and you only have a three-man crew which means it can get knocked out in a, th in a single shot. Yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, cannon. Really good mobility. Surprising mobility, I would say, for for Japan. Yeah, not 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 typical of what you see in the in the Tetri for the most part. I would say buy. Uh, for 250 does it does get you a good foothold in the Japanese tree? Yeah, for the price, I don't think you're going to go wrong if you're just starting out in the Japanese tech tree. Up next, we have the Japanese multi-turreted monstrosity called the Rogo, and it goes for 1,370 Golden Eagles. This guy sports a 70mm turret, a 37mm turret, and then it has a rear 7.7 .7 machine gun on a turret. One of my highlights in War Thunder is I killed a milk truck with that rear turret. Is this thing practical at all, Bear? It actually has pretty decent armor where you can't be killed by a 50 cal for the most part. You do have a six-man crew and you actually have a pretty okay uh, armament choice, but you really don't have that good of a turret traverse. And the two guns have such different velocities that it does get hard to fire them both at the same time. You also really don't have that rate of pen, but you do have that heat shell that's actually quite good. I bought this guy because it was unique. For the price though, I just can't recommend it for a rank 1 1.3 battery tank for 1,370. Maybe if it's half off, I would wait. Yeah, I would say wait for sale. It's a wait for sale for me as well. Up next, we have the Chiha short gun. You can pick it up for 1,000 golden eagles. It's it's a really good buy for 1,000 golden eagles because with that HE shell, you have 30 millimeters of penetration, which is enough to kill almost everything at its BR by a hull break but you will have to start to hit for roofs of turret and hulls when you start to get a little bit up-tiered. The Chiha chassis on it is, if you're familiar with one from the Tetri, you know that it moves quite well for what it is. It has decent enough mobility. The main advantage is you're a 1.3 vehicle at a rank two. So you can grind out rank three while still remaining in the 1.0, 1.3 range. Plus it's just a lot of fun to hit something with a big cannon. I real quickly want to state though, there's a reason why this guy went down to a battering of 1.3. That HE shell is temperamental. And anything I'd say bigger than an M3 Stewart, you're probably going to struggle or just have to leave it because you won't be able to finish it. You can still break a kneecap though. But you can't finish your dinner. Ain't need to finish your dinner if you're breaking a kneecap. What are you, in the mob? I can't answer that question. And after that we have the Japanese starter pack which is a Chihi... 5th Regiment, battle rating of 2.3, you can get it end game for 850 Golden Eagles, or you can buy it on Steam, War Thunder, PlayStation 4, or Xbox for 999, it'll come with a key 44, 120,000 Silver Lions, and 7 days of premium. I think that this tank is awesome, it's got good firepower, good mobility. Yeah, the Chihi has that really good 47mm cannon for its BR. It's a relatively small size, and you do have really good mobility with it. You just don't have that much side armor and that 47 mil can't really do long range fighting. The big thing with it is that you are, you have a good gun depression and a good reload speed and you're a relatively small target. So you can brawl a little bit, but it's not going to be trading hits. But like all the other vehicles in the starter pats, this is a really good buy. I also want to real quickly state that 47 millimeter has a APHE round. And so when you do hit and penetrate things, you can get a lot of good spalling or ammo detonations. When it connects, it connects. Up next, we have the Chinu 2, which may be my favorite Japanese premium. It is a Chinu with a long 75mm Type 2 Model 2 cannon. It goes for 1,600 Golden Eagles in game. 
So as much as I like this tank, the real quick drawback is that it's very hard to get a 4.0 lineup in the Japanese tech tree. You either have to bring it up to 4.7 with the Cheeto, or bring it down to like 3.3, I think, with the Nato, the Soki, the M24. Um, there's not much in that in that 4.0, 4.3, or 3.7 area of the Japanese tech tree, if, if anything, actually. Uh, you do get the Type 2 Model 2 Cannon, though, at the 4.0 BR, whereas normally you'll find that at 4.7. This 75 mm will punch through nearly everything you'll see, except for the Mark 7 Churchills, for the most part. It's a good Sherman killer. It's good most everything killer. Uh, it plays kind of like Panzer 4 F2. It can destroy anything, but anything can kill it. You have fast mobile chassis, you have good handling, you have good gun depression at negative 10 degrees but you don't have the armor to sustain a frontal engagement for the most part. So you will want to just make sure that you kind of play this thing mid-range, preferably on a hill with that gun depression, but this gun is just phenomenal for its tier. And for that reason, it's a buy for me. It's absolutely a buy. This is one of the vehicles I grinded the Japanese tree with. Up next, we have one of the more unique tanks in the Japanese tech tree, the Hori prototype. 105 millimeter experimental high velocity cannon, great gun depression, Pretty good front armor, I'll cover that in a second. And this thing moves really well for its size. So one of the things that you may notice about it immediately, when the gun goes down, the roof goes up. I think it's a pretty cool way of giving the breech more room to move without increasing the size of the cab. One thing I always get asked, is it really easy for the crew to get strafed or killed by artillery? And I can honestly say it very rarely happens, if ever. It has really good front sloped armor with a very potent gun as you mentioned with the gun depression increase from the roof being able to latch open it allows it to kind of fight on ridges where it can angle the armor a little bit more that being said the armor isn't a hundred percent uh reliable to block all the shots because things like is2s and isu-122s will go through it quite easily you also don't really have side armor or rear armor but if you can keep this thing front towards enemy you can easily dish out the pain, especially with that 8 second reload. So for 6,090 Golden Eagles, would it be a buy for you? This one is a buy for me, simply because it is a bit more of the forgiving uh, format of a vehicle for a premium. Where you don't really have to worry about a still cap as if you were something lightly armored. That being said, you can also build a really strong lineup around it. There's two things I want to point out real quickly about it before I give my recommendation. First off, that lower plate that's kind of flat and facing forward. It is only 75 millimeters thick. A more experienced player, when he sees you, will shoot through that to get your transmission or possibly a fire or your crew. Secondly, the side armor is, what, about 50, 55 millimeters? And I believe the rear is about 35 millimeters. So if anybody's on your flank, you're, you're, you're toast. If I had to compare this guy to anybody, I would say it's just a more mobile version of the Ferdinand. Um, so if you like the German Ferdinand, you'll probably like this guy. This one's a little bit more forgiving, I feel, though. Repair cost wise, especially. And keeping all that in mind, if that sounds good to you, I would recommend it as a buy at full price. Up next, we have the Type 75 MLRS. And if you don't know what MLRS stands for, it's Multiple Launch Rocket System. And that sounds like fun. This guy holds 30 130mm Type 75 rockets and has a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on the front there. Pretty useful, actually. Out of all the rocket vehicles, I feel that this one is the strongest, even at battering a 7.0. It is for sale for 8,200 Golden Eagles. If I would recommend any of the rocket vehicles to you, it would be this one. Yeah, the Type 75 MLRS does have the advantage of pretty potent rockets that if you if they glance a weak spot, it'll take care of the vehicle. It's a really mobile chassis for what it is at BR. And you also have the ability to use, and we forgot to mention this for the other rocket vehicles, a user site. So it kind of takes away the guesswork off the in-game normal site where you have to kind of flail around trying to find out where the rounds drop but with the user site it actually gives you the full increments which is a requirement really if you want to run these rocket vehicles effectively that being said you do have your limitations you don't have any gun depression to work with but you do have the mobility so this one does kind of work well if you can get into an ambush position where you can kind of use the mobility and get in and get flat side shots that'll work great if you have a buddy playing a ho reproduction and you run this, that's a pretty diamondite combination. Would you recommend it as a buy bear for the full price of 8,200 Golden Eagles? We have been rough on the rocket vehicles. This is one that I would actually get at full price because you can, if 
you really want to do the artillery roll, you can throw the Type 75 SPH with it and have a lineup of just sit back and lob HE and rockets at things. I picked this guy up for full price when it was first introduced, and I was immediately shocked by how well it performs. And for that reason, I will give it a buy. You say it's more bang for your buck. And the last Japanese premium that we have to cover is the Type 74G. It is right now for selling a pack on War Thunder, PlayStation 4, and Xbox. $59.99, 2,000 Golden Eagles, and 15 days of premium. And we're gonna sound like a broken record, but this goes for all these top tier premium packs. If you're at rank one, rank two, rank three, I would say that this is a no buy for you. Now when we get to talking about the tank, it has a 105mm L7A3 cannon, which is pretty devastating at 9.0 I would say. And a unique thing about this guy is it has hydraulics. So the Type 74 Mod-G, it plays somewhat like the Leopard and the OF-40s will, where you are going to be relying on a lot of the mobility. That being said, you don't quite have the mobility to be on par with the Leopards and OF-40s and you will fall behind things like the AMX 30s, but it does help to kind of play this thing on ridge lines, as well as a bit further back. Uh, to use the fact that you have the Type 93 shell, which is one of the better shells in that BR and range. This thing is a absolute monster at ridge line and hull down sniping because you can use that hydrogen mat suspension to raise and lower the hull. It, it, it's the same advice as the other top tier premiums. Get this one if you're at that BR range where you're comfortable enough with it. Otherwise, stick with some of the lower BR ones, but it's absolutely worth the price because it's at 9.0, so you have a lot to build a lineup around. This guy is on par with all the other top tier premium packs we've mentioned. Gaijin is not putting bad tanks for sale for $59.99. Up next, we have the Chinese tech tree, and the first tank that's for sale is the T26 number 531. It's going to be very similar to the review we gave to the Russian T26. I have a hard time telling you to buy the T26 because I feel that you'll immediately jump to the M3A3 Stewart the second you unlock it. Yeah, it, it'll, it's kind of the same symptom as the Russian Premium one where there's just better options for the BR. It, like if you run the M8 Stott with the M3A3 Stewart, uh, Stewart, Stewart or something like that, I would hold off the Eagles for it and pick up a Talvin for it, for like a steward or something instead. Uh, Stewart's a bit more forgiving and a bit easier to play. Up next we have the M4A4 Premium Pack, which is on sale at War Thunder Store, PlayStation 4, and Xbox for $19.99. It'll come with a thousand Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. This was the tank that I picked up to grind out the Chinese tech tree when it released. And besides having an adorable kitty cat face, it performs like all the normal Shermans do, 75mm M3 cannon, it has the 50 cal on top. If you like Shermans, this is a pretty strong buy. If you don't like Shermans, you won't like this tank. It's pretty it's pretty cut clear right there. If you're not familiar with the A4 variant of the Sherman, that was typically reserved for lend lease tanks that would be sent to places like Italy, China, France, and so on. So much like all the other premium Shermans, this is something, if you like Shermans, go ahead, get it. It's a good buy for that. But if you don't like how Sherman plays, there's a couple better options in the Tet tree or coming up in the higher tier premiums. For me personally, it's a buy. Yeah, it's, it's a buy. It's just, you know, be prepared if you don't like how Sherman's play. After that, we have the T3485 number 215 going for the price of 4,880 Golden Eagles. It is a T3485 with the number 215 stamped on the turret. Just like we said the Sherman, there should be no surprises on what you may be buying here. Yeah, so the premium T3485 plays exactly like any other T3485. The major thing, though, is in the Chinese tree, you do have that T3485 guy, which is a much better option to talisman that than to pay for the Eagles to get that vehicle. In my opinion, better bang for your buck would be to talisman the Tetri one and save some eagles there. If you do want to buy that premium one for the lion bonus and stuff, it's an absolutely fine vehicle at full price. It's just better bang for buck is to talisman the Tetri one. I am really on the fence if you should buy this or wait. If you are just starting on the Chinese tech tree and you're getting to rank three, rank four, and you're looking for a premium vehicle to help you grind through the rest, this would be a solid buy at the price of 4,880 golden eagles. 
for me personally, I just don't find enough value in it to recommend it for myself. Yeah, it's absolutely a fair thing. Is If you want something to grind and get some lions more efficiently, it's absolutely worth it. But for the lack of difference in it, it's probably better, best to wait for a sale. Up next, we have the IS-2 number 402 at the price of 6,090 golden eagles. I'm not feeling it. If I can real quickly make a case about how strong Chinese 5.7 is and why you shouldn't buy the IS-2, I'm going to list off some tanks. T-34, 85, S-53, Guy. The Tech Tree IS-2. You have the, if I remember right, the M-36 Jackson. The M-18 Hellcat. It's hard for me to tell you to buy a vehicle for 6,090 Golden Eagles. Only difference being the number 402 written on the side of the turret. The premium one doesn't add enough to warrant the pickup nor does it necessarily bring anything different or unique to an already insanely strong BR range for China. Bear and I were talking about this beforehand, and I think we both agree that if you're interested in buying a strong Chinese higher tier vehicle, I'd recommend taking the money that you have spent on the Golden Eagles and purchasing the T69 II G Pack, which is our next premium. This guy is a rank six at a battle rating of 8.7. He's available to be purchased at the War Thunder store, PlayStation, and Xbox for $59.99. Comes with 2,000 gold eagles in 15 days. I would say that's a way better pickup than the IS-2. This is a fairly strong tank, 105mm ZPL-94 cannon. Performs on par with anything else that we've talked about, 8.7, 9.0 premium pack. Has a little bit of a reactive additional armor package on it. Smoke grenades, big machine gun. It's a pretty decent tank. That cannon with the AP FSDS is a really strong contender. The proximity HE shells fun to use against helicopters. One thing to watch for though is you don't have that much kinetic energy protection and you do not have thermal sights at this BR. Which is probably why it's at 8.7 instead of a 9.0. Yeah. Also the fact that you aren't that fast and your reload's not that great compared to some of the uh, western MBTs. But if you're looking to grind out your rank 5 and rank 6 Chinese vehicles, this would be a very good tool to do that with. And you have enough in that range where you can really build a lineup with it. So for that reason, we're going to recommend that it is a buy. Now we are on to Italy. Up first we have the M1340. Rank 1, battery rating 1.0, premium tank for sale for 250 Golden Eagles. I'm sorry I paused there, but I'm trying to think of something nice to say about it. There's really not much nice to say about it. This is a vehicle that I would only pick up collection wise or if it's on sale there's a lot better options for the low tier italian it's a really rough tank to play the 47 minute cannon is average the problem with this vehicle being the armor the lack of mobility and that turret traverse drives me personally insane and for that reason i would say wait for a sell if you're a collector like bear said you probably just want to purchase this because it's not that much if you're just starting out with this tech tree i would highly recommend that you look at some other options up next, we have the M1441, which is for sale right now for 700 Golden Eagles, but it is also the Italian starter pack, and you can get it on Steam, War Thunder, PlayStation 4, and Xbox for 999 and it will come with a RE2001, 120,000 Silver Lions, and 15 days of premium, which is a much better deal than the tank we just talked about. Good mobility, decent cannon, this is a way better package. Again, repeating it, we've got a trend here with these starter pads where they're a lot better off to buy than the 250 rank 1 stuff. The M1441-70 will play kind of like all the other 2.3, 1.7 range Italian mediums. So you will get kind of a feel for how they go. For every other option in the 2.3 and below BR range to grind with just to get the hang of the tree, this is the best bet. So if you just start out Italy, it is a strong buy from both of us. Up next, we have the M4 Hybrid, and a hybrid does not mean it's electric and gas. It's not a Prius. What the hybrid stands for is that the front armor is cast, and the side and back armor is rolled. And on the side, you'll see this kind of diagonal weld, and that's where the two meet together. This Sherman is available for 1,300 Golden Eagles. Rank 2, battle rating 3.7, has the M3 7mm cannon. At 3.7, there's a lot of vehicles in the Italian tree to kind of build a line around as well. It's worth the buy if you're comfortable with how the Sherman plays and I just want something else to grind with. I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here. I'm kind of disappointed that this was added as a premium 
for the simple fact that it bumped out the P40 premium, which I felt was a more authentic and unique premium tank at this battle rating. Now we just have another Sherman for sale. If the P40 ever comes back, and same thing with the M43 tank destroyer premium, those two are very strong premiums, and if you run them together, it's an easy way to grind out your rank 3 and 4 Italian stuff. I'm not trying to talk bad about the Sherman. If I'm going to play Italy, I want to play Italian tanks. Plus that M43 tank destroyer, if that comes back in the coming days with this anniversary sale and the packages, pick it up because it's a rank 3 at 3.0. So you can kind of run a bit lower in the BR, but a higher tier than the Sherman Hybrid. Up next we have the M26 Premium, which is on sale for 6,090 Golden Eagles at a battle rating of 6.3. This was one of the original Italian Premiums when the Tech Tree came in. So the Italian M26 will play exactly like the American one. You do have that M82 shell to use, and I'll pretty much wipe out everything at its BR if it pens. You have really good mobility, low profile, you have a top mounted 50. The only big thing is you're not that fast compared to other nations' mediums, and you have mediocre handling at low speed, and the 90 mil has low penetration if you're not using the APCR. That being said, it's an insanely strong vehicle, and with a lot of the Italian Tetri tanks, at 6.3, like the M36 B1 and the Fiat and the Obel, you can kind of build a pretty decent and varying lineup around it. In my opinion, it's a buy, especially since they removed the M60 A1 premium. Yeah, it's going to be a buy for me as well. Like I said, I wasn't too sure about it, and then I bought and played it, and just based on my personal experience, I can't, I can't give it negative marks. So that'll be a buy from both of us. And the last Italian tank that we have to talk about is the OF40 MTCA, which is a pack that's available at the War Thunder Store, PlayStation, and Xbox for $59.99. It'll come with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. It's quite possibly one of the fastest MBTs at its BR. It's faster than a Leopard, has good gun handling, has the laser rangefinder, and has a lot of selection for ammunition. So the best way to play this thing is use your mobility and the fact you've got a very good gun and rangefinder. Mid-range, long-range hill sniping. Your turret is a decent size, so it is easy to get hit if you're peeking over a ridgeline. The big thing to watch for, though, is you do not have thermals at 9.0. So you will have a little bit of a handicap there compared to some of the other 9.0 and 8.7 premiums. If I can make a comparison, it's like taking an XM1 lower chassis in the power to weight ratio and slapping on a, let's say, Elite Leopard 1 L44 turret on top of that. Yeah, that's fair. You, if you run the DM23 round, you can kind of play this thing like a hybrid L44 in the at some one. That being said, it's super effective for what it is. And at 9.0, you do have enough vehicles in the BR range You can build that you can build a decent lineup with, including the Tetri OF40 uh, uh, Mark IIa, as well as the Centauro. So like Bear and I said before, if you're at rank 5, rank 6 Italy, and you're ready to make that jump into top tier tanks, this would be a very solid buy. It's, it's, it's a good buy if you're ready for it. Just when I say I love French tanks, we have to talk about the H39. For a rank 1 battle rating 1.0 tank at 250 Golden Eagles, 2 crew members, 37mm SA-38 cannon, below average in armor, maneuverability, mobility. It's not that great of a vehicle but a lot of the french tier one are that way as well for what it is and in its br it's not a bad buy for 250 but i would wait for a sale on it just because there's a lot more strong vehicles in the br above or the rank above we're going to talk about soon that are better purchase in terms of premium grinding if you like to add to the collection i say wait for sell otherwise if you're just starting out in france please take the 250 golden eagles from this and apply it to the next game I'm, talk I'm gonna talk about. Which is, of course, the B1 Terror. And Terror is short for a way bigger name that Bear may try to pronounce for me, because he's Canadian. Absolutely not. I haven't taken French class in like six years. At a battery of 2.3, this is essentially a B1 Bis that was taken to the A team and had a bunch of stuff modified on it and a montage. And by that, I mean track armor. Lots of track armor. And that track armor, I feel, 
makes a big difference compared to B1 bits. So for 1300 gold eagles, if you're just starting out in France, this is a solid buy all day long for me. Has that 75 millimeter cannon in the lower right side of the hole, and you have that 47 millimeter SA-35 on the top turret, makes a pretty good combination to take up most targets you'll face. It's one of the stronger premiums, uh, BR for BR. The B1 Terra has a lot better armor than the Tetri one because it gets that side armor upgraded with the angling plate. It also has a different front than the Abyss 2 I want to real quickly add. It, it's different in a lot of places, not just the side. No, but that's the main one is you lose that, you, you gain the fact that you no longer have that weak side and the weak grill. Don't have that great mobility. The hull gun has actually more traverse and better armor. And you also have an extra crew member over the Tetri one. This thing is one of the better premiums. You don't have the mobility per se, and some of your some of your guns do have lack of penetration at times, like that APHE shell. Can struggle if you get something of a bit higher tier. But overall, this thing's actually a lot of fun to play, and it's a good thing to get a good amount of grinding done. Up next, we have the AMX-13 M24. This is one of the more recently added premiums, and man, do I love it. It's essentially an AMX-13 lower hole with an M24 turret slapped on the top. So you got that 75mm M6 American cannon on a French white tank. It's for sale right now for 1,150 Golden Eagles. It performs really well, and the fact that it is a rank 2 at 3.3, you do get a good amount of grinding done into your tier 3 stuff while still being able to use a lot of the Tetri stuff, like the AM at 13 F11 and the M4A1 in the Tetri. Overall, I personally like the FL11 more due to the fact that you don't look so obscene. One thing it does have going for it though is that roof 50 cal, but the turret height kind of changes the profile of this thing and you do have to adapt a little bit. It's not a bad buy at all though. It's a good buy. It's a strong performer, and for that reason it is a buy for me as well. Speaking about taking turrets off things and putting them on different packages, we have the M4A1 FL10 Premium, which is a pack that is for sale on War Thunder and PlayStation 4 for $29.99, and it will come with 1,000 Golden Eagles and 7 days of premium. This thing is a heavy hitting, auto loading. You ran out of adjectives, didn't you? I did. I was going to hype it up more, but I figured I'd let you, uh, you, you get the sales pitch going for it. So you combine the turret of the AMETS-13 with the M4A1 and you kind of get the perfect last cannon. A 5 second reload on an extremely pinchy gun and the fact that you do have decent enough mobility, you can really use this thing as a second line support or a mid-range sniper. One quick thing compared this thing compared to the SA-50 of the Tetri is the SA-50 does have that slightly better shell whereas this thing doesn't so if you are looking to get similar performance without the price of the premium one talisman the m4a4 sa50 that being said you will not be disappointed with the fl because that five second reload is really shocking to some people if they're not prepared for it and for that reason it is a hundred percent buy from both of us i would recommend getting it sooner than later because i believe that it will most likely disappear from the game at some point yeah, with a lot of these vehicles, keep an eye when they release the sale package the coming days on the War Thunder site. They do sometimes remove vehicles from sale and then either bring them back as Golden Eagle in the future or they're just gone. This year, you're going to be watching for that stuff around the 2nd of November or so. Up next, we have the French Panther, which is a A variant for 6,090 Golden Eagles. And this looks like a really strong premium paper. But for me right now, it would be a wait for sale for various reasons. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a French Panther A. In my opinion, it's not worth picking up anymore due to the introduction of the next vehicle that we're going to talk about. Also, the fact it's the only 5.7, which leads you to really only have a couple vehicles in your lineup. It's just not really worth it in the long run of a game because you don't have the ability to bring a lineup. So right now, you either have to bring in a Jumbo Sherman M4A3E2, the 75 mil version, to 5.7, or you have to up tier thing to 6.3 or 6.7, which it really doesn't like to do. It is a Panther 8. It does perform well, just not in the conditions it's in. 
Up next, we have the AMX-13 SS-11, and we will be flying solo on this one because Bear just sadly lost power. Which is a shame because he really likes this light tank. But don't worry, I will do the best I can. This vehicle is for sale for 7,480 Golden Eagles, and that is quite the steep price. It's at a battle rating of 6.7, and what makes this AMX-13 unique? It would be the four SS-11 anti-tank guided missiles attached to its forehead. Now don't get too excited about four anti-tank missiles at 6.7 battle rating, because they are still guided by your keyboard, with your arrow keys or your WASD, however you have it mounted, and not by your mouse, so they still take a little finagling to get on target. It's got that high velocity 75 mil. Basically, you want to play this guy as a flanker or sniper tank. Don't try to brawl. You can have some fun shenanigans sneaking up behind Tiger 2s and, and then launching a missile and giggling and running away. That's usually what I do, but I'm not very smart. And to also mention, the 75 millimeter cannon has an auto order. So 12 rounds ready to go, four missiles, light, agile. It's a pretty good little guy. So if you like this style of tank, I would recommend it as a buy even at that price. Up next we have the SM, which is another recently added premium that Bear and I both fell in love with. It is available in a pack for $39.99 on the War Thunder Store, PlayStation, and Xbox. It will come with a thousand golden eagles and seven days of premium. This tank was a competitor in real life to the, I want to say AMX-50 off the top of my head. Yes, AMX-50 and the small SM shared the same contract. This vehicle lost in real life, but it is... It won in Bo's heart. With a 100mm cannon firing every 4 seconds, how could it not be the joy of my life? It's an insanely strong vehicle overall, given the fact you actually do have pretty decent armor, especially with the angling of it. You have really good mobility for a heavy tank. Yeah, so for a 60 ton tank with a thousand horsepower, you got good mobility that complements the decent amount of armor it has. I wouldn't rely on it, but it can take a hit. The strength of this thing is that mobility and that gun to get into advanced positions where you can hold down a lane or get side shots. Yeah, we're not gonna tell you to brawl in this thing, but if you can ambush, holy cow, can this thing ambush. It, it can brawl when necessary, especially when you're top tier, but in our experience, it's a much better, lar it's basically a large Hellcat in terms of you wanna play it in a flank or go down a, a lane as hard as you can and get an advanced position set up. It is a very strong buy from Bear and I. Oh yeah, absolutely. This thing is great, especially considering the repair cost of the Tetri autoloaders. Save some money. And for the last French premium tank we have to talk about today, the AMX-30 Super, which is a pack available on the War Thunder Store PlayStation and Xbox for $59.99, and it will come with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. This is a battle rating 9.0 AMX-30 with a 105mm cannon. This thing is all speed and firepower. The, the strength of this vehicle is the mobility and the fact that that main cannon and the fire control system with the stabilizer, absolute monster at firing on the move and getting to positions fast. Unlike a couple of the previous top tier premiums, this one actually has thermals as well, so you can use this in a bit better capacity in night battles, as well as for acquiring targets in forests and such. Just like the other top tier premium packs we talked about, this is going to be a buy from us. Just keep in mind, Please don't buy this if you're just starting at the French Tech Tree at rank 1, rank 2. Uh, but there's a lot of great late tier French vehicles that this will fit in nicely to. It's a really strong vehicle for mobility and firepower. The armor is okay, but at this BR and this tier, arm, the armor of this thing's not quite going to be a 100% hold up. But overall, it's a really strong buy. And the last nation we have to talk about is Sweden. And the first premium is the Rank 1 Battle Ring 1.0 STRV M39. This little monster. 37mm cannon with two 8mm machine guns. I say monster because at 250 Golden Eagles, this guy comes with APDS. 3 second reload with APDS. It punches well above its weight class. You've got good mobility, decent turret armor, and a good reload with that APDS as well for penetration. Downside, your turret's not the fastest rotation and you only have three crew members. Once again, for 250 Golden Eagles, it will be a buy from me. It's a, it's a buy from me because it's a good vehicle to get the basics of early Swedish down. After the STR VM39, we have the SAV201248. At rank two of a 3.7 battle rating, this guy is available in a pack for $19.99 on War Thunder, PlayStation, and Xbox, and it will come with a thousand Golden Eagles 
and seven days of premium. This thing is a auto-loading monster. It will fire a shell every 1.2 seconds. This thing, it, it was insanely, it was insanely OP on its release. Now it's kind of gone to a good, happy balance point. You do have that monstrous gun, but you have no armor and you have no open top. That being said, this thing will kind of play in the ambush position, as well as a flanker, because you do have pretty good mobility for its BR. You have also you have an insanely low profile. You only have 90 mils of penetration, but you just want to use that on side shots or weak point shots. Overall, this is definitely a buy. It is a very strong second line slash support tank. I would say it probably tends more towards a veteran and experienced War Thunder player. If you're just new starting out, I think you're going to struggle a little bit with this guy. But it is definitely a unique, fun playstyle. Up next, we have the STRV-103, which I know is a tank that Bear was super excited in when it was added to the game. The Cheese Wedge, some call it. The Wedge. Uh, what are some other names? The S-Tank. This tank has a very unique playstyle, and it and the German event vehicle are the only two to have what's called hole aiming, which means you get to position and then you have to hit a key, and it will allow you to aim the barrel up, down, left, right. So there's a, I guess you call it transit mode, and then you have a shooting mode that you have to get used to switching on and off to. And to aim the gun, you have to move the entire vehicle to the target. This vehicle was one I was super excited for, but the hole aiming still has some teething issues. It's hard to get a weak point to hit when your hull is shaking violently because the terrain interaction is not quite there. So this tank is a battery of 7.7. It's for sale on War Thunder, PlayStation, and Xbox for $49.99. Will come with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. Would you recommend this as a buy? Honestly, it's a wait for sale for me because until they fit that hull aiming, it's, it's got a glaring weakness. If I could make a recommendation to somebody who's interested in the S-Tank, there is a few variants of it in the tech tree. I believe at an 8.3 battery rating, we have a 103C. Yeah, and the 103A at 7.7. I'd recommend trying the 103A first. And if you like it, then make the investment in the pack. If you hate the 103A, the 103O is not going to be any different. And lastly, we have the CV90105 TML, which is a 9.0 Swedish premium at rank 6 for $59.99. It is available on War Thunder, PlayStation, and Xbox. And it will come with 2,000 Golden Eagles and 15 days of premium. This has a 105mm cannon. Seems to be pretty typical for these 9.0 premium packs. This vehicle is extremely quick. Very good power to weight ratio. Strengths of this thing is you have commander thermal sight as well as gunner thermals. So it's a lot easier to acquire targets using the commander view. That being said, you have a very good APFS DS round. You have good top speed, or on par acceleration, two-plane gun stabilizer, downside you have hull break, very very thin armor, and you have no ability to, uh, and no AA defenses, like a pencil mount machine gun. It is classified as a light tank. It is a light tank in every sense of the word. So for that price, would you recommend it as a buy, Bear? It's absolutely a buy, but much like some of the other ones, this is one you want to wait till you're within the BR range to have experience with some of these top tier Swedish vehicles because the fact that it has no armor makes it a little bit less forgiving. I picked up a few months ago and with my limited experience with it I would say it is a buy. I've had a lot of fun with it and it is a very strong tank with that gun. So once again I hope you found this helpful. If you have any comments, concerns, questions please feel free to leave a YouTube comment below. At the time of this video release War Thunder has started its anniversary sales. If you are in a position to pick something up I highly recommend that you use that War Thunder affiliate link and 3% of your purchase will be kicked back to the channel, which once again helps us make content like this. Thank you for watching our Ground Force portion of our premium guides. Up next, we will be moving on to airplanes, and we will be doing a whole video on US aircraft with Hambone. So before I conclude this, thank you so much, Bear, for sitting in as my co-host and making this possible. I, I, is the check in the mail? It won't bounce, I promise. Is it Monopoly money? <laughs>